We're entering week eight, and it's time to do a mid-season mock draft. This will not incorporate any of the stats from week one through seven, and I run the risk doing this the night before week eight, because if someone blows up in week eight, people are going to go, Smitty, how come he's so low? Oh, Smitty, he blew up in week eight, and you've got him three spots lower than you should. So chill out if someone in week eight goes nuts and you're looking at this on Monday. Let's get into the mid-season mock draft. Week eight, moving forward, the Fantasy Football Show begins now. This is the Fantasy Football Show with your host, Smitty. Top five running back. You're watching the Fantasy Football Show. Derrick Henry is number one. No, it doesn't change my thinking that at some point he could break down this year. He's averaging over 27 carries per game. If you extrapolate out, is 463.8 carries on the year. Smitty, he's just different. Keep telling yourself that, but I'm still drafted him number one. We're only in week number eight. If I drafted him, I would look to trade him in double digit weeks right when we enter because 463 carries is not sustainable. Is there a small chance maybe it is? I suppose, yeah. But the odds are extremely against a man carrying the football 463 times, coming off of a 400 plus carry season the year prior, coming off of a 2,000 yard season the year prior. I'm still drafting him one. Don't misinterpret what I'm saying, but I draft him one. I potentially trade him for a Diggs and a JT later. An Eckler who's struggling right now. These guys will emerge in weeks nine and 10. There'll be some buy low opportunities, but in today's example, entering week eight, an Eckler and Diggs or something like that. Again, I do that later. I don't do that now. Now I draft King Henry. Now I dominate with King Henry and look to only trade him later. Number two, give me Kamara. He has already had his bye week entering week eight. Everybody worried about him getting PPR work. Well, Winston fed him a ton last week. Alvin Kamara is the locked and loaded number two overall. In fact, if you were to trade Henry right now, you'd want to get Kamara in something. This is the only guy that comes close to Henry in my view moving forward out the running back position. Okay, maybe maybe I shouldn't word it like that. I mean, Cook Cook does enter the conversation for the next guy up after Derrick Henry, but I think him getting banged up so much makes me worry. If you can guarantee me Madison, then I think Cook and Kamara could stand side by side. So I'll dial back my the only running back that can compete with Derrick Henry. If you've got Cook and Madison, you're close enough that if you were to make a swap and get another like wide receiver, like let's say a very doubted DK, or you could get an injured Hopkins right now, trading for Cook and Madison for Henry, I make that kind of trade. But my one, two, three are Henry, Kamara, and Dalvin Cook. Walking into week eight, rest of season, not factoring in weeks one through seven, but factoring in bye weeks and everything going forward. This is week eight on, people. Number four, give me Ezekiel Elliott. Now, Dak Prescott is questionable for week number eight as of the recording of this video. If he sits out, we may see what happened last year where Elliott doesn't do as well because the offense isn't dynamic and potent. Stack boxes against Elliott. Maybe he doesn't produce. Or maybe he steps up because every year isn't the same as the year prior. Either way, Dak's not expected to miss a big chunk of time, even if he sits out week eight, which he might not as of the recording of this video. So I'm not going to bump Elliott down because of what we don't know about Dak. If Dak was out for the year, you'd probably see Elliott drop significantly. But as of right now, Elliot, you're sitting right at four, pal. Give me Najee Harris at number five. The guy's a volume king. He's used in the PPR game. He's used up the gut equally. He can't be game scripted out or phased out of a game. He is Najee Harris. He can do anything. And right now, he's my number five overall player. A guy we got laughed at. You take him in the first round. <laughs> What's wrong with you, Schmitty? Top 10? Are you crazy? No, no, no. The man known as Najee Harris will not go into the, the rookie wall dark night. He could slow down a little bit. I worry a little bit about a rookie wall, but he's special. And, and I think some rookies can push through the rookie wall. If anybody can do it, I believe Najee Harris can push through 
maybe a tiny little rookie wall. Maybe he has kind of a one or two game hiccup. But as long as he stays healthy, he will push through that rookie wall and continue to be a top five running back. Number six, I'm gonna put Jonathan Taylor. He's coming on strong. And he, he does this. He disappoints in the beginning of the year. People give up on him. You can trade for him low. He was one of my, my biggest go-get players after a couple weeks. When he disappoints, go grab him, and you got yourself a top 5 to 10 running back. He's doing just that. And moving forward, I mean, you could argue Aaron Jones maybe or Eckler. You could maybe go one of the wide receivers. But I think right now, it's Taylor. Taylor's arguable inside this top 5. So I think he's, he's really good right here. I love me some Aaron Jones. I talked about Aaron Jones walking into week number eight. We've only had the Thursday night game for week eight take place. Past that, nothing in week eight has happened yet. Know that when you come back to critique this on, on Monday. Hey, Smitty, I can't believe you are so and so number seven instead of six. This is before week eight, minus the Thursday night game. Aaron Jones proved himself on Thursday night. Totally utilized. Even with A.J. Dillon doing well, Aaron Jones is getting fed. And he had a second touchdown call back. He would have had a bigger game than he did. Give me Aaron Jones at number seven all day long. Give me Devontae Adams' his counterpart right now. Even though he's got a bye week coming up, I still put him at number eight. Now, depending on my record, if I had maybe five wins, I would like Adams. If I had maybe three or two wins, I, I would probably trade him for like a Diggs, a, a, a player I like a lot. Close to Adams, but that has already had the bye week. So some of my advice might depend on your situation. If we're talking trade between Adams and Diggs or Adams and a wide receiver that's already had the buy, like a Justin Jefferson, I might take JJ over Adams if I need that extra game. So much is dependent on your situations out there. So don't don't take this as law. And when I give you slightly different advice, go, I don't understand why you're telling me you like JJ now, Smitty. Situation dependent completely. Tyreek Hill. Number nine, everybody ripping on Mahomes. Oh, Mahomes is figured out. Mahomes this. The Kansas City Chiefs are horrible, Smitty. Give me Tyreek Hill all day long. Again, I would take a JJ if I need that extra game. If I'm three wins and I need to make a trade, you can get an extra game by trading Hill for a player like Justin Jefferson. But ranking value, all things being equal, Adams and Hill are ranking ahead of the current running backs that are right around this range because Eckler, as I'll mention next, is hurt. And so I feel like Adams and Hill are a little bit safer right now, but Eckler's coming up. Cooper Cup, we're putting at number 10. You could argue him at eight or nine. I'm not mad at you if you like Cooper Cup there. So put him there if you want him. I, I like him. Eight, nine, 10, doesn't matter. These wide receivers are all fire right here and you can make an argument for every single one of them. This will be a little controversial because he is banged up right now, and I understand that, but I'm going to predict that things aren't as bad as it looks right now. If they get worse, then I'm going to adjust and adapt. I'm a human being. I'm doing the best I can, as mom always screamed when I was younger. But give me Eckler at number 11, because if he is healthy, he's a top five overall player, maybe top six overall player. So right here, I feel like we're baking in a little of the risk. It feels a little bit baked in. Baked, 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 baked in, boys! Am I a little crazy here? Am, am I getting too excited here? Maybe this is a little high. I don't care. I'm putting Jamar Chase right here. The guy's blowing up. He's special. He's just special. Just plain special. And I think that the dude is probably going to get better. Him and Burrow have this magical college-built rapport. It's different. This is different than another rookie. This is different than Justin Jefferson. This is Burrow. Joe Burrow is a top five quarterback going forward. If I'm doing dynasty rankings, Joe Burrow is in my top five. I don't know who I'm bumping out. I'm not sure, but Burrow's in the top five. Herbie, Burrow, get them all in there. But Jamar Chase, I mean... Right now, who's better? Cup Hill Adams? I, I suppose, yeah. Jefferson Diggs, I could rank them ahead, especially with the bye weeks like I'm talking about. Depends on your situation, but if push comes to shove, we're talking talent. You're talking about who's going to score more any given week. I'm putting Jamar right here. Deal with it. Give me Justin Jefferson at 2.1. I feel like with the bye week out of the way, how good this man is, I'm putting him number 2.1 um, without much hesitation. I mean, I, I like Diggs here. You could argue Chubb here. You could argue probably 
Daryl Henderson, if you wanted. Past that, I, I mean, this is this is where he belongs, and, and I think Diggs I'm going to put next. Again, you could argue Chubb. I'm not going to call you wrong if you like Nick Chubb here, but Diggs, to me, feels the safest. He's buy free. Him and Jefferson have already had that bye week. I like him a lot here going forward. If I'm drafting at 2.2, I feel very comfortable with, with Stefan Diggs right here. I'm going to be honest. I feel a little uneasy with Nick Chubb here because of the injury, and he's not on the injury report so we have to assume the best we can't assume the worst i'm going to put him here he could actually do very well from this spot but you're not crazy to move him to 2.1 you're not crazy to have jefferson at 2.1 i don't want to hear it in the comments you can't have nick chubb at 2.3 you can't have any of these guys at 2.3 they're all good they're all worthy of of 2.1 or 1.11 Daryl Henderson, 2.4. The volumes there, I worry about if he gets banged up. What's McVay do? I don't trust McVay, but he is getting volume. He looks phenomenal. You can keep doubting him, or you can say, hey, he's a 2.4 guy. I get it. A lot of you are like, why is Kelsey not 2.1? Kelsey should be 1.12. I'm just not an early tight end drafter. I'm the guy that tries to predict the next tj hawkinson and i feel like you can take kelsey at 1.12 if you want but you're going to be chasing running back you're going to be chasing wide receiver most people that drafted waller or kelsey in the first round are probably struggling this year because of the landscape of running back right now you're chasing different positions and now you're looking to trade kelsey maybe not maybe you're the one outlier that did well and drafted some good talent in the second third and fourth round that didn't bust or get hurt I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm just saying this is about where Kelsey enters the equation. For me, everybody's different. I get it. Okay, I haven't put Chris McCaffrey in here yet, and we don't really know what's going on with him. If everything looks good next week, I don't think he'll return next week. But if he does return next week and he's entering week number nine to start, he could walk into the top like two to five overall. For right now, though, it's tough to imagine drafting him higher than this because you have to wait. And with a, a season that's week eight through 17, you know, waiting two weeks is not a, a good look. But I just want to preface that right here, I'm putting CMC, but I would move him immediately to three, four, two, five if he's starting games. <laughs> I honestly don't know how I feel about this one right here because I like J-Rob. I just don't know that I love him right here. I like him here. I don't love him here. I think a lot of you could relate. He feels like good value, but also still a little bit risky as your second drafted player. But this feels pretty decent for him here. And with the way running backs are looking right now, you can't really ignore them. I imagine this is where people are going to go, okay, I was with you until this pick, Smitty, but CD Lamb, that's way too high. If Dak is out for a significant amount of time, of course I adjust and adapt. If Dak is out one game, I don't really adapt too much to that. Lamb, to me, is going to prove to people that he's a top five wide receiver in 2022. Lamb, to me, is going to prove to be a top 12, maybe top 14 overall pick in 2022 drafts. And he's going to do that proving in weeks eight on. If if Dak sits week eight, maybe week nine on. But I feel like Lamb is going to prove this value correct. He's going to do the 2.9 draft slot proper. You watch. AJ Brown at 2.10. You could start arguing a lot of different things here. Mike Williams, you could argue Hopkins, you could argue Swift, you could argue Debo, you could argue Mixon. Where's Mixon, Smitty? But I'm going to put AJ Brown right here. We're probably going to start seeing things a little different moving forward, I imagine, between me and every one of you watching because like astigmatism in your vision once it's off a little bit, things get wider and wider as you get further and further away. There's no way people are going to be, any two or three people are going to see eye to eye this deep into a draft. So take all this with a grain of salt. Understand this is my predicting going on here. And that I understand if you've got guys moved all around. DeAndre Swift at 2.11 feels about right. I know there'll be some debate on DeAndre Hopkins at 2.12 because he's banged up, but he has 10 days to get right. If he ends up being hurt pretty significant, then you know I'm going to adjust and adapt. But as of this moment before week eight, knowing that Hopkins has, well, nine days now to get right for the next week, I'm going to put him right about here. And I think Hopkins is a steal in trade moving forward. People are freaking out about DeAndre Hopkins and I'm buying. Dude's got seven TDs in eight games. I'll take it. 
Give me Josh Allen at 3.1. I don't care about early QB. This guy can carry you. This guy can be the top scorer going forward in fantasy football. I love Josh Allen at 3.1. Give me Mike Williams at 3.2. I suppose because running backs are so depleted, Mixon at 3.3. And don't give me, Mixon needs to be higher. He's injury prone. He's not delivering. Stop. This is good enough. This is respect enough. Even with Wilson out till week 10, I'm still putting DK right here. Give me McLaurin at 3.5. I love McLaurin going forward. No, people haven't figured out Patrick Mahomes. He's still a top three quarterback right now. Give me Mahomes at 3.6. I don't know how I feel about Debo at 3.7, but because I don't want to look at complaints all day long, I got to put him in this third round. But I got to say, like DJ Moore, Debo, they're all very arguable right here. Mike Evans, I could argue any one of them at 3.7. This feels very risky, but I'm going to put Gibson at 3.8. He's off the injury report. Who knows what that really means? Maybe, Maybe we're being misled with that. But if he is, in fact, healthy enough to play and not be listed on the injury report, I'm going to start putting Gibson back in that that lower third round range because he's he's a running back in a very thin running back pool right now in fantasy football. And I think 3.8 isn't that crazy. DJ Moore feels about right in this range. Calvin Ridley about right. Again, Gibby, Moore, Ridley, Debo. I don't want to hear how I've got that order wrong. That's a very, very close group of players right there. Same thing with Cordero Patterson. You can put him at 3.5 or put him at 3.11 or leave him out of the the third round altogether. Mike Evans at 3.12. Kyle Pitts is worthy of this pick. Darren Waller. Where's Darren Waller, Smitty? Where's Darren Waller? How can you not have Darren Waller right here? I, I mean, there are so many good players right here. I think Evans and Waller. Ridley and Waller, you can argue that. I I don't think positional advantage is just so important that I'm going to forego getting these players that are right up above. I like Waller. Waller could be argued at 3.5 or 3.12. What about Fournette? You could put him right there as well. Damian Harris is very deserving of of consideration at that 3.12 pick. The one I'm going to hear the most flack about, where's Barkley? How could you not have Barkley in your top three rounds, Smitty? Blasphemy. Well, he's right here. It's Waller. It's Barkley. It's Pitts. It's Fournette. It's Evans. It's C. Patterson. They're all very, very close. I had to make a decision. And I probably left out another name or two. Mark Andrews, Eli Mitchell, Josh Jacobs, Godwin, Deontay. I know I know, some people are going to be upset. And because my whole family has been knocked out by this darn pandemic, and I, I don't have quite the energy that I used to have, I may have missed a guy entirely, so cut me some slack. This is my week eight on mock draft i hope you've enjoyed catch all my content at smitty1.com and get my my text device at heysmitty.com i appreciate every one of you watching and don't forget my spotify show go follow me go to smitty1.com click on the spotify logo follow my new video show that's right it's not an audio pod anymore every show on spotify is a video show moving forward and i've got exclusive spotify content dropping there every week so you can't get it on youtube you can get some of my youtube stuff on spotify but the content that's got the spotify green all over the spotify logos that's only found on spotify so you have to follow me in both places spotify and youtube get some appreciate you now get to it this is the fantasy football show with your host smitty You're watching the Fantasy Football Show. I'm Smitty!